this time on The Paddock. What's the goal for today? Go hit it, finish the race. Yep. Portland's weird, but awesome. Can you say weird and awesome in the same sentence and say that it's like it's all good? Like Portland, Portland's cool. I, I could get used to this place. The fact that you have a track in a downtown area with public transit to it in such a cool town like Portland, and there's there's fans rolling in all over the place. Good evening from Portland International Raceway here in beautiful Oregon. It's our first West Coast race of the year. Uh, we spent the entire day today, Thursday, for media day, uh, just giving VIPs and some media guests rides around the track in our GTI TCRs. We got some pretty good reactions. It was a lot of fun. That was so amazing! Yeah. I really <laughs> want to do that again. The back stretch, but I don't think he's going to break, and then all of a sudden it will slam on the brakes, and then you go around the corner. It's so much fun. Uh, and then we also did a track walk. This track kind of suits my driving style. It's definitely a track that suits not overdriving the car and, and keeping the tires underneath you. Varying grip levels, varying curb heights and curb bumpiness. It's technical in some places and not very technical in others, and it's pretty simple. Varying widths of track, it's, it's a very diverse track. I feel like both Michael and I have a good feel for the track. Really the impression is, is that this place is really wide in some spots and really narrow in others, which is gonna be really interesting during the races when you have traffic. Begins. We have uh, qualifying, uh, the traditional schedule, Saturday race, Sunday race. So, really excited to be here. We're excited to see our partners from Zero Three Four Motorsport come down and uh, represent uh, their West Coast operation. Raceway. Today is the official start of the weekend and the racing. Behind me is False Grid. We are just moments away from the first practice session of the day. The first one is going to go right into the second one. Uh, we have a big break in the afternoon and qualifying is later on tonight, right around 6.50 in the evening. So we are excited to be here as always and looking forward to uh, see what we can do this weekend. at Coda, as I was able to keep the tires underneath me and at, towards the end of the race I was able to charge. I think the same thing might happen here. I'm excited to get some fast laps. I think the cars will do well. I think the setup will do well. So regarding the heat, it's, it's supposed to be, I mean we're supposed to qualify at 6.30 this evening and it's probably going to be somewhere around 95 to 96 degrees. Obviously new tires going on the car, so my strategy is to go out and do a, an easy warm-up lap. Second lap will be pushing it, but maybe like eight tenths, but just to, just to stay smooth. And then the third, fourth, and fifth lap, just attack to see what kind of time we can get out of the car. And then we're probably going to call it a day because I think that's all the car's going to have. It's only a 15-minute session, which is good, but it also means there's more pressure for that 15 minutes. Qualifying was all right, the car felt better. First time all weekend, uh, got to go on sticker tires and uh, learned a couple things uh, at the end of the back straightaway. It's a fifth gear corner, not a fourth gear corner like it was this morning, carry a lot more speed in with sticker tires. Try to move out quick early and I think I put too much heat in the tires too early. By the time I got to the track and the tires had sort of given, given up the ghost a little bit. That was it, we were only gonna run five laps. That put me, I believe, P9, which is a good place to start from. You know, I stuck to our strategy, five laps out, came back in, let the car sit. It, you know, the strategy is what makes this, this thing work, and that's what we're gonna do. The car feels good, we have a good race car for tomorrow, and we'll see, find out tomorrow too. The 
sunsetting behind me, which marks the end of qualifying here. The guys did the best that they could, had a good strategy, which was uh, conserving the tires for tomorrow's race. So we came seventh and ninth. Michael will start in front of Nate tomorrow. We'll give it a shot. Fingers crossed. We're always learning. We're always improving. That's racing. Good morning from Portland International Raceway. Today is Saturday race day. Behind me over there is our booth with our partner Liquid Molly, Saks Performance, and 034 Motorsport. We are giving out a ton of free swag, uh, t-shirts, hats, sunglasses that I'm wearing right here. Everything that you could need on a sunny race day, we're giving it away for free. This afternoon's schedule is a race in the afternoon, right around, right around 2 o'clock but it's super cool to have our partners from 034 Motorsport here, who are based in California. They actually brought up their project Audi S4, and uh, it's super cool to have that here with all of their parts on it, to have Troy representing the brand and actually talking to people face-to-face -face and showing them what the parts do, how much better they are from the stock components, and how they can actually get them and put them on their cars themselves. really value our, our strategic partnerships with great dealers and FCP Euro is one of our favorite relationships. Hi, I'm Troy Sykot with 034 Motorsport. This last year has been really exciting because uh, we launched into this partnership into the Pirelli World Challenge and we're honored to be co-sponsor. You know, having, having a booth here is great. We put out all of our, you know, our displays in 034 Motorsport and SAC Performance and, and Liquid Molly, but having actual folks from uh, 034 and from Liquid Molly to talk passionately about their products and see how excited the fans are about their products is, uh, you know, a really big boost for us. And, you know, it's in our DNA. Racing's in our DNA. And I mean, they get the enthusiasts, and, and it really shows. You know, it really shows when, when Troy shows up with an awesome, you know, Audi S4, sticks our stickers on it, sticks some of their stickers on it, parks it next to our tent, wiping it down. People are asking questions. And I can't believe, honestly, I'd say 80% of the people I've talked to have been European car owners. A lot of European car enthusiasts out this way, so I think it really paid off. And it shows that we've made uh, a good decision in who we partnered with. And then, of course, supporting the racing team as well. You know, we, we want to be here for moral support and to root them on. Anytime we can get out here and uh, get in front of our fans and customers on the West Coast, we relish that opportunity. So one of the coolest parts about the weekend is the vintage class. Being able to see these guys throw it out all on track with some of the coolest makes and models from all different years. It's just amazing. They speak for themselves. It's so awesome. TCA cars were under three minutes, under three. So here we are, uh, moments before the start of Saturday's race. Let's hope that our strategy plays off with uh, tires and let's hope that the guys have a clean race. Safety car, dispatch now, please, dispatch now. Okay, Nate, you have two formation left, two formation left. And then from there, you know, had the sequential cars in front of me, 
And then I believe the fourth lap in, carried a little bit more speed, broke 175 feet further than I was supposed to, went off through the dirt at 100 miles an hour, which is always fun, but I had enough of a gap that I was able to go back on the track. And at that point, I just realized I wasn't gonna catch these sequential cars. I had a gap to the back and I just needed to manage that gap and, and I would have finished where I finished. So I had Felipe in front of me and then Michael in front of him and we were just chasing each other down for the rest of the race. Mason Felipe was behind me, you know, giving me good pressure, but halfway through the race, it was so hot. You know, I was, I was hoping it was gonna be over a little bit sooner, but uh, I got a call on the radio. Now 21 minutes remain. Copy that. Talked myself into uh, staying cool, you know, finished sixth, and then uh, with a penalty of fast nine at the end, a drive through penalty, got moved up to fifth. If we look at it and split the group into the cars that are equal with the DSG gearbox and the cars that aren't, uh, we really finished first and third. Right now, uh, we're running the fastest of the group that we're in. I think Michael and I both raced a really, really good race. We were clean. We are, I mean, our lap times speak for it themselves. I mean, they're within a couple of tenths every single lap. We just, we ran the cars as fast as these cars could run consistently. And as a race driver, that's what you really look for. Hey, you still have really good, consistent lap times. Just keep that going. That's really, really good. All right, here we are, PIR race two. It's gonna be a standing start today. We just hope that the guys run consistent laps and stay clean like they did yesterday. So the Hondas and the Hyundais are running 95% power map. They maybe will be 15 seconds off the pace, you know, from what we we're doing yesterday. But you never know, yesterday there was no yellows, and so that really spread out the field. but good luck to the guys. Here we go. Five minutes to the command, five minutes. Rodeo begins. a little quicker than Felipe ahead of you, so just keep doing what you're doing and being accurate. Copy. You can't feel my heartbeat, but it is pounding through my chest right now. There are roughly 11 minutes left in the race at this point. We are running our best race of the season by far. Uh, Michael and Nate are racing each other. my neck the whole time was able to keep the pace but they were close every single time we got a little bit of a ding in the back bumper but I was just trying to Thank mind the gap you. and not overdrive the car and, and uh, give me a chance to you know to be there in a finish so absolutely f***ing incredible amazing job by both Michael and me the whole crew oh, wow. <laughs> this is the best finish we've had all year so, so, so proud of these guys. It felt really awesome crossing the finish line, staggered, literally right, right next to each other. That marks the end of our PWC weekend here at Portland International Raceway. Valiant, valiant finish. We're super proud, we're super happy with uh, how we did. But the next time these cars will be on track is at Utah. Literally all of this stuff is going straight from Portland to Utah. Until then, FCP Euro Motorsports signing out. Keep it real, Portland. Stay weird, Portland. <laughs>